You never know if it could change your life. Take a chance. Hello, Rob. We're here just relaxing after the end of a hard day of gaming. Welcome to a late night episode of Dungeon Master of None. I'm uh, Dungeon Master Rob. I'm Dungeon Master Matt. We have to say a big congratulations to our uh, Rob, the homeowner. That's right. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, well, uh, your Dude. donations and support <laughs> have right. made this possible. <laughs> the zero dollars that you have pledged to our non-existent Patreon made this possible. Now, let me tell you a little bit about something called generational wealth, friends. Uh, you should try it. It's great. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I'm in my new new home. Um, I've spent all day unpacking. Matt has been at work all day. We are both exhausted. So what better time than now to discuss a light and airy topic? That's right. Woohoo! We're going to be talking what about... Consent in gaming. Actually, I want to say that this can, I mean, okay, consent is a serious topic, <laughs> but I don't think it's wrong to have some excitement and enthusiasm for this topic. No, I agree. After I'm... reading this, <laughs> after we've read Monty Cook's Consent in Gaming, a free PDF available at MontyCookGames.com. And, uh, yeah, I felt like it was kind of inspiring. Yeah, it's. Uh, we'll, we'll include a link. Everybody should read it. It's short. It is well written. It has good uh, pictures, which we all love. We all love pretty pictures. Uh, actually, it has some really good art, uh, to be honest. Uh, unnecessarily good art for the, the subject matter. It's all stolen from uh, Numeria or um, uh, Invisible Sun. Still good. And Monty Cook really knows how to put together a... Uh, a PDF, a book. Uh, he knows what it is that he's doing. No, but Matt makes a good. And this is this is by uh, Monty Cook and uh, Sean K. Reynolds of Pathfinder fame, and Shanna Germain, who I believe, in addition to being a veteran game designer, is also a master in other sorts, not just dungeons, but of actual dungeons. Oh, uh, like, like a, a oh, I'm not familiar, but uh, I guess yeah. we can. Uh, wow, interesting. Anyway, uh, Matt actually makes a good point. This does not have to be like a heavy or serious or unpleasant topic. And we'll get into the specifics of what Monty Cook wants to talk about a little bit later on. But, you know, uh, it is something, obviously, that a lot of gamers otherwise avoid or uh, conspicuously ignore. Uh, and that's, I would say, bad. Uh, and generally bad for the hobby. So I'm I'm pretty happy that Monty Cook has put this out. I, I, I'll, I'll especially glad that this has come from a veteran, a uh, white <clears throat> male, you know, a paragon of the field, right? I, I think that is is especially good coming from him, partnered with people who are not, right? I, I think right. that the people who need this, right, the people who need a little like rap on the nose, um, are going to listen to Monty Cook, even though he's not necessarily the you know the right person in all instances to deliver this but I, I think that it's good that it's coming from him and sort of the flip side of that Rob yeah. is that a lot of the ideas in this book have not come from Monty Cook right he is the compiler and the broadcaster to the masses of them but they came th this is some grassroots change most of these ideas about how consent should work the X card uh, the sort of uh, checklist right have come from the trenches of the people who have benefited the most from this. That's right. Other other real change comes from below, Rob. That's absolutely the truth. That is absolutely the truth. Though, Matt, it requires the cooperation and participation of the bourgeois to make it happen. You need the elites to buy into it. Uh, okay. Uh, update from the field. Shanna Germain is author as of as kinky as you want to be. Your guide to safe, sane, and smart BDSM, which is an amazing title for a book. So yeah, so a great person, obviously, to contribute to this. So yeah, so actually that's a great point. And Monty Cook makes sure to reference and give credit to the people who developed these. But many uh, individual creators have uh, created hacks, right, to to build these ideas into their own games. And Monty Cook has sort of put them together along with a general overview of consent in gaming into this a very handy, very short a pretty good PDF. Honestly, this is great. I'm really glad we took a look at this. This is a cool thing that I think the hobby has been missing. So, uh, bravo. Well done. And, yeah, I'm excited to dig into this, Matt. 
Yeah, let's dig in. And I think we should start with you, Rob, giving us the official, unassailable, and final definition of what is consent, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. No, have this. obviously we can. <laughs> let me, let me though, let me pick a quick bit from the introduction to start from. Um, actually, there's I, what what I really like is there's a list of important things about consent. We'll break this down, but this is a good place to start from Monty Cook. So, here are the let's see, one, two, three, four, five, ten. I think it might be nine, nine or ten things you need to know that are important about consent. Are you ready? Yep. One, you decide what's safe for you. Two, check. The default answer is no. Check. Three, it does not matter why consent was not given. Double check. Four, nobody has to explain why they're not consenting. Yep. Five, there may not be a reason why they're not consenting. That's fine. Six, there's a spectrum of consent for each topic. Yes, sir. Seven, it's not up for debate. Yep. Eight, they may they can always change their mind about what they are or aren't consenting to. And finally, anyone is allowed to leave an uncomfortable situation at any time. So this is the broad overview, right? This is the the introduction. So what do we want to say about these nine points, Matt? These are things that, after looking over them, thinking about them, these are, I think, baseline things that if you don't take this into your game, right, uh, you need to take a step back and 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 think about why you're having fun with friends, right? Right. Uh, well, and these was... are baseline things for basically being a human being and treating other people like human beings. Right. And as I was reading this, I kept having this thought. I was like, oh, you know, this is just baseline stuff. I've been, you know, I know how to do this. This is this is just how you should act around other people. But then I remembered that I wasn't always the wise old age of 33 and that I wasn't <laughs> always, you know, as good at this stuff as I, as I am now. And I'm still not perfect. And it's one even if you're pretty good about this, great to check in and go over this list. And two, useful for a lot of players who may not be as experienced with gaming. I, I, At the end, I'd like to talk about some specific examples of this from our gaming experience. I, I have some, yeah, some some examples of, of times when this might have been useful and I didn't use it. But this is this is just sort of how you should treat people. I agree with Matt about that. You should just just like a baseline of interaction with other human beings. But if you're not super experienced with dealing with people who are outside of your immediate friend group, or if you're exploring unusual or unique situations, either in game or socially, you may encounter things that you were not prepared for that this might come in handy about, right? Just because you, you know, have never run into a problem with like your close friends who know you very well and you know very well, it uh, doesn't mean that you can't benefit from this sort of thing. And this, I think, is especially important if you're going to be any, doing any sort of public gaming or meeting with a group of people who you don't know well. Absolutely. Um, I think another reason just for, uh, you know, taking a look at this PDF or something similar is uh, I found reading this PDF in a way uh, liberating, right? So we know this is uh, one of the reasons why we know this is a good thing is it makes all the wrong types of people in the RPG world mad. Yes. Just so mad. So mad. Um, right. That, uh, you know, there's there's uh, oh, there's some uh, politically correct culture trying to tell me how to game or they're trying to uh, restrict what what we can do. But, you know, consent is the opposite of restrictive right it's liberating yes. in letting you explore topics that you wouldn't normally be able to just you know throw in because you know what you've gotten everyone's consent and you're keeping that conscious at all times this can expand the type of things you can do with a role-playing game yeah and there's this is um you know this makes me think there's nothing <laughs> more telling than when somebody gets all worked up usually a dude about the idea of affirmative consent or getting an enthusiastic yes because well it just says something and this getting this sort of buy-in from your party right from your players is wonderful it's liberating it means that you don't it means that you have sort of uh established what the game is going to be and you can all be more comfortable and enjoy yourselves 
Um, at one point, the uh, I can't find it. The the PDF mentions though that like in order to have fun, everyone needs to feel comfortable, and that's what this makes possible, right? If yes. you have players, or if you are not comfortable uh, as a DM, if your players are not comfortable, then they are not going to enjoy themselves as much. They're not going to feel as liberated. They're not going to do as uh, they're not going to role play as enthusiastically. It is just a great and wonderful thing to do before setting out to game and it makes the game better it doesn't make it worse it doesn't restrict you here's an example uh that i think if you're if you're even the little bit still dubious about an idea like this think about it this way right um uh you might have a player who has a uh a, a deathly fear of spiders for whatever reason, right? This is something that genuinely upsets them, right? Um, you know, uh, having something like going over topics that uh, you want to not include in your game could prevent you from causing someone, you know, uh, extreme harm, right? We're, we're here to have fun. And if you're unwilling to sort of take a step back and say, oh, I'm, yeah, willing to make sure I don't really hurt someone, uh, then you're not a good person to play with, right? Right. Um, you know, think about how bad you would feel if someone who had a terrible fear of spiders and you, you know, did something in the game that sort of uh, uh, made them feel really, really, really bad. Uh, yeah. You know, you would feel bad. Yeah. 99% of human beings would not want to cause another person harm in that way, one would hope, right? One would and hope. And you shouldn't either. Well, and that's a good point because when, when the word consent comes up, uh, automatically, I think that we and generally people think about, of course, uh, sexual consent and romance and um, issues surrounding that. But the examples used in this document are often uh, arachnophobia related. You know, uh, is it OK for me to describe spiders as long as I don't describe their hairy mandibles and many sets of eyes, which is a great point. Right. If you if you have right. a friend. Yeah, if you have a friend who just had a close family member die of cancer, don't put cancer in your game, right? right. Uh, unless that's something they want to explore. It would give them the chance to say, hey, let's not include this because this would hurt me. Right. Right? Well, we don't want to hurt people. And going over the checklist, there was just some things I didn't think about, like claustrophobia is on here. I'm pretty claustrophobic. And if... This has never happened, but if, you know, I had a particularly evocative DM and they were like, you're going into a very close, dark tunnel and they, we stayed there for a long time and they described the walls closing in or being trapped, I would become anxious and uncomfortable. And, you know, that's a pretty like specific thing to happen, but it had never even occurred to me that that might, you know, show up in a game and it just hasn't because I haven't run in that sort of game, but that's. You know, if I were filling out this sheet, I would definitely put a we'll go out. We'll go over the specifics of the consent checklist, but I would definitely put like a maybe next to claustrophobia. Right. Right. And and that's another thing is right. Uh, you know, there are graduated ways that people can respond to this. Right. The The sample thing here gives us an idea of, oh, I'm more than OK with this, um, you know, uh, this is something you should be cautious about. Um, maybe uh, let me know ahead of time or I'm uncertain, right? Or this is like a hard no, right? Yeah. And so uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but if that was like in the middle for you, right, you might want, you know, this would be an occasion where you're like, listen, uh, if this gets too intense, I'm going to have to say, hey, uh, ooh, can we back off? Yeah. And that's, you know, I can't imagine it coming up, you know, but if uh, if it, I, I, it, could definitely happen. I'm getting like sweaty palms just thinking about it. Um, so <laughs> and moving on, it's not a, it's not a big deal. I'm just like, oh god, I hate tight spaces. <laughs> I'm really glad that very few of my games uh, emphasize the closeness of caves and the you know uh, none of my characters ever get like locked in a box. Anyway, so the basics of this are those nine points, right? That's where we start, and um. Do we want to talk about any of these in in detail? I, I think they're all pretty self-explanatory, right? Uh, you know, the default answer is no. It doesn't matter why consent is given. Like, you don't have to explain yourself, right? That's just part of the, you know, the respect of the game. You don't have to have a reason for not liking something, right? If you don't want to be in a game with something that, like, just triggers you or makes you feel icky, you don't have to explain that. It's a game. You're supposed to have fun, right? Uh, nothing makes me yeah. crankier than hearing about 
a DM or a GM who wants to like barrel forward with a, a game that people are not enjoying, right? Like regardless of whether or not it's a consent issue or just a, a, an enjoyment issue. And that's, I think this is a great, I think, I think people need to be able to say, I don't enjoy this and that be valid. Right. This this goes back to like one of the first things we talked about on this show is that when you run a role playing game, right, you mm -hmm. need to check in with your players, um, get some feedback in some way, either a lot of feedback or just a little bit about what type of game they want to play. Right. Yeah. Um, and, you know, when we were talking about it, right, we were mostly talking about like, do you want there to be elves and dwarves or do you want there to be lasers and spaceships or do you want both? Right. Right. But see this as an extension of that. Exactly. And some of this is just generosity and patience, right? Allowing mm. people to leave an uncomfortable situation, like make space at your table for that. Uh, this also relates not just to consent, but uh, to intense situations or frustration, like make it clear that if you just need to get up and walk away, that's okay. That's fine. We'll, we'll take a break. Nobody needs to call it out or like make a big deal of it. That's a thing that happens, right? Get, we've all had heated gaming moments and, uh, you know, <laughs> the, the, the less heated they are, the better. Well, so, so there's, so that's the first section, right? This is the basics. And I, and I, yep. I encourage you all to read this, but I, I think they're fairly self-explanatory. They're just pretty good guidelines for getting to a, a, a foundation of consent where everyone can work with. And then there's two more broad sections. And um, I think this next one is really interesting. It's recovering from consent mistakes. Yeah. Um, and I have a couple examples about this, but Matt, do you want to sort of summarize what, what this is about? It's important to remember that, like, uh, no one is ever, like, a, a perfect DM or perfect at this one aspect of, of dungeon mastering. I think two points that I agree with uh, that are really interesting, right, is that when you make an, a mistake, right, uh, it's important to, you know, apologize in front of the group. And that, that goes an incredibly long way of showing, you know, some remorse and attempting to mend your behavior. This is basic ways to be a decent human being. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I've, I've never had a, a dungeon master, whether it was a mistake in cons consent or just in running the game who, um, if they apologized or said, you know, Oh, I recognize what I did here was less fun. I'm going to, and then made steps to make things better. Who wasn't a great dungeon master, right? right. This is a hallmark of a great dungeon master. And not to get too, like, not to get too, uh, you know, um, to place ourselves upon a, a pedestal of goodness, but the things that make you a good ma dungeon master are often the things that make you a good friend, <laughs> right? It just, it's just We're about, the best like, friends, right? It's just about paying attention, right? It's about listening. It's about being conscientious of like what's going on around you. These are, these are important, just human social behaviors. And it is a lot of pressure to be a good DM, but I think it's also a good exercise, right? You have to listen to people. You have to pay attention and see if they're uncomfortable. These are good things to do in life. And they are excellent things to do as a DM to make the game fun. Right. Yeah. I love that you and I have taken uh, this idea of uh, what what it means to be a good dungeon master, and we can imagine a checklist is good at basic math, um, <laughs> balances encounters well, draws intricate grid maps, is a kind friend, and we checked those first three uh, <laughs> at, a, at an earlier point in our lives and did the the last the one. The last, last, right? Yeah. yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> we, early on, we were definitely like. Makes good maps, you know, uh, understands the rule systems. Yeah, no, it, it uh, <laughs> you learn what makes a good <laughs> the DM. Uh, yeah. Um, here's a great, as an example of like, just like how to be a good person. There's a little like sidebar here that says, note, don't say, I'm sorry if anyone was upset. That's a weak apology and doesn't acknowledge that someone is upset. Just say, I'm sorry. This is really sorry good if advice. I offended you, Rob. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> By the way, sorry if you were offended. If any of you are lucky enough to have girlfriends uh, or wives, uh, I know you aren't. Or boyfriends, because, or you know, boyfriends or husbands or partners or partners. Uh, 
don't ever say this to them. <laughs> don't ever say, I'm sorry if you were upset. <laughs> Just that's a, it's a free bit of advice from, from your dungeon master. Don't ever say that to them. Um, yeah, just, uh, just don't <laughs> absolutely do not say that. Um, it's okay. It's okay, Rob. I, I offend, I, 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 uh, I forgive you, Rob, for, for letting me down. <laughs> well, listen, Matt, I'm an equal opportunity offender. I offend everybody equally. I don't know why you're, uh, you're so upset about, uh, about everything. Anyway. <laughs> All right, so right, that's a warning sign for a dungeon master if if uh, or or a player if they're like, I don't want to to think about this or at least have a brief discussion about this. If they say, oh, it's because well, I I push everyone's buttons. That's right. All right, well then, yeah, you you probably shouldn't be here. Because yeah, no, uh, it seems if, like you're you just want to be a terrible person. If, if they game. pull a, if they pull a Ricky Gervais on you, they're like, oh oh, I'm just offensive. Are you offended? Are you offended? They probably aren't a very good person to play games with you know uh let them let them annoy people on xbox live just you know uh not a not a pro social player uh so yeah send them to the toxic msn gaming zone <laughs> do you remember the msn gaming zone i do, I do remember the msn gaming <laughs> zone i used to i used to put together starcraft matches on the no wait it was before that it was um Age of Warcraft. Empires? No, it was Age, oh, yeah, of, Age Empires of Empires yeah, on the MSN that. gaming zone. Jesus Christ, that was... I played a lot of X-Wing versus TIE Fighter. Ah, oh, that was the uh, other thing, yeah. Guess oh, what? Uh, People who are in clans for the Empire are sometimes Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them are not. Many of them are not. Some of them uh, are not. All right, the next section is called Aftercare and Checking In. And this is... A, God, this is just like... I, this is stuff I have come to do on my own, but it's like so great to see it written out and it's such good advice. So this is just a post-game check-in, right? And this is such a good idea, right? Regardless of whether or not anything happened, even if it was a great game, just say, hey, how's everybody feeling? Was that fun? You know, I usually do this over text. I'm like, I hope everyone had a good time. Here's some things that I'm thinking about. Let's meet again next week, yep. right? And that's just like a great thing. If I feel like maybe I did something that was like potentially an issue, I'm saying, hey, sorry if this was weird for anybody. Usually it's something like, hey, I'm sorry that we spent 45 minutes in this dungeon. I did not mean for you to spend so much time slogging through those spiders. I hope you had a good time anyway. But, you know, sometimes it's like, hey, I'm sorry if like I touched on a sensitive topic or anyone gets upset. But it's just like such a good idea to just... Check in and give people an opportunity, make them feel comfortable saying, hey, I didn't love this. Could we do something different next time? Or could we spend less time, you know, shopping or whatever? When I first saw this, I was like, what immediately sprang to mind was that weird Kickstarter that we looked at a long time ago about a role playing game about mixed couples in the Third Reich that were both Jewish and oh, non Jewish. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, yeah, you definitely, uh, for something like that, you need a check-in afterwards to make sure that, like, everyone is doing okay after talking about such an emotional thing. But it works. It's just as important for a, a, a fun uh, a, a, a expedition to Barrier Peaks, right? Um, maybe it's not about your emotions being frayed, but it's about, right, is everyone having fun and, uh, uh, you know, how can we improve in the future, right? Games can always get better. Just because you may not be dealing with something like, you know, groundbreaking or heavy just because you're not <laughs> role-playing a mixed marriage in the Third Reich doesn't mean that you don't need a check-in, right? It's just a useful thing to do. I, I think this is, this is a... We all have friends who, who get like, ooh... A little maybe too into it when, you know, uh, their character explodes because they pressed the wrong button right. on the alien space artifact they found, right? Right, right. Uh, regardless They of, need the check-in. Everyone needs the check-in. This is, I think, a good just DM habit regardless of, like, its relationship to the consent issue. Just give your players a chance publicly and privately to check in and say, hey, this was good. Hey, this was bad. And, I, again, I usually do this over text. But you can send an email or you can just you can have a few minutes after the session. But I think this is a great habit to get into. I think it's a good thing to do for sure. Excellent. The last section is uh, the consent checklist and some other oh, wait. tools. Sorry, I actually do want to talk a bit about bleed oh, yeah. because this was interesting to me. Um, bleed. bleed. Uh, yeah. So bleed for people who don't, don't know, right, is usually a, a condition associated with a number. So like bleed two <laughs> means you take two damage at the start of your turn. Each round. Yeah. 
In this context, it means when your feelings from the game bleed into real life. So, tell me if this is true for you, Matt. I don't think I have ever had this work from game to real life. I have had it work sometimes from real life to game, right? I have oh, yeah. had people come in with emotions that they then expressed in game. I've never had somebody who is flirting in game or angry in game then, like, transpose that into real life. Though I'm not saying that can't happen. But Oh, yeah, obviously I, can. Either way, I think this is a really good thing to be aware of. And this is where it gets tricky. So we've talked about this before, but this is challenging because it asks a lot of you, but you just sort of have to be aware of people's emotions. And obviously, if this were easy the world would be a much better place, right? But I, I do think that if you are a DM and you want to level up in your DMing, and if you want to try to be better, you want to have players who recommend you and keep coming back and keep coming to your games, I think it's really important to try to pay attention to their feelings and get a sense for uh, if anybody's enjoying themselves, if anybody is um, having bleed, if anybody is, you know, uh, walking away frustrated or upset, and, and that takes practice and that takes time, but it also just takes intentionality. It just means wanting to do that and being aware of it. Yeah. Uh, it's as simple as that, but yeah. as complicated as that also. The next, let's talk about the tools. So there's three, is that right? Three main tools that, that they give you to work with. Um, and they are, uh, there's no table of contents, hang on. So, so the final section is 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 some tools that you can use in uh, in your game. The main one presented here, though some other ones are mentioned, is the idea of a consent checklist. Right, and this is just such a cool and good idea, and it is simple as you hand. It's it's just like a when you hand out like a questionnaire at the beginning of a session zero. But it's just a checklist that says, here are some themes and ideas. Please indicate uh, that you consent, uh, like enthusiastic, right? Green, uh, yellow, you're okay if this is veiled or offstage, maybe discuss with me first. And then red, hardline, I don't want this in my game. And it's just yep. a list. And it, it covers everything from horror elements to uh, relationships to mental and physical health. As I mentioned, one of the things on here is claustrophobia, right? I hadn't even thought about that, but that was a good thing to consider. I would mark that yellow. Uh, there's things like bugs and blood, demons, gore, harm to animals and children. Torture. Uh, harm to animals is an interesting one because I aggressively avoid this in all of my games because I don't like to be mean to animals. But it occurs to me that in other games that might be a pretty standard thing to happen. Um, so if, if this, I would probably, a red wall campaign, for I, example. <laughs> I would probably mark this yellow. If somebody were handing me this consent checklist, uh, if not red, and honestly, one of the useful things that we've, that you've hit on twice is this yellow area is, is super useful, right? Veiled or offstage. You've brought this up when talking about, uh, sex in some of your games at your table. You're like, this is fine. We're going to fade to black. Right. And this is one of the things that the game, that the, uh, that this consent to gaming book mentions specifically is fade to black. And this is the strategy that I use for a lot of things. I use this for sex. Uh, I generally try to avoid it entirely because I've never played with a group of people that is mature enough to handle sex in an RPG uh, well into my thirties, but it has come up and I, you know, try to honor my players, you know, actions in game, but I am not going to describe your sexual exploits. So my my go-to is fade to black. And there are a lot of things that you can do this for, right? If there is torture, right? And your players may not be comfortable with that. You can just say, you know, you can gloss over it or fade to black. Um, if there uh, is, is, you know, a special type of violence, you can, you know, uh, ease off on the description. But this is just a, a great way to get a, a feeling for where your players are at. Uh, it's it's such a good tool. There's no reason not to include this in your session zero. Right. If you check out nothing else, check out the RPG consent checklist. Um, it, it I think, will be super useful. The other resources they bring up are, are things like uh, uh, gender pronoun name tags and something we've talked about on the show before, the X card by John Stravalopoulos. The, uh, the X card's super handy. 
Um, I don't have this in my games, but I probably should just have it. It's just a thing to have where a player can hold up and say, you just hold up the X card, and then you know that whatever you're talking about, whatever you're approaching is making them uncomfortable, and you can just move on. It's just a useful thing to do. I, I think having this helps your players feel comfortable objecting, and it gives them a way to do so without dragging the game to a halt, right? Mm -hmm. That's one of the risks of not talking about consent beforehand, is if your players are uncomfortable with something, then there's not a good way for them to bring that up without, you know, drawing attention to it or, um, you know... Seeming like the, the person who wants to spoil everyone's fun. Right. Which so, then probably will make them feel even worse. Exactly. Which is why it's so important, I think, to talk about this beforehand, include something like the checklist, and have an X card. This is interesting to me because I tend to tailor my campaigns to be a, a lot more like... um. They just tend to veer toward PG-13 pulp adventure, and I just don't enjoy including torture or gore or all sorts of things like that. But some people do. And I was thinking about this because, like, if I were going to run Descent to Avernus, and I kind of do, just for example, uh, and or, or parts of it, there's some pretty gross stuff in there. And I should probably do a check-in. Right. Uh, for my players, if they were coming from, for example, like a jaunty water deep dragon heist, you know, fun times adventure into a, you know, descent into hell just to make sure that everybody's on the same page. <laughs> um, so this was useful for me to read, uh, as we've talked about, but it's, it's just full chock full of good ideas, Matt. Yep. Uh, did you want to talk about some specific examples and how something like this could, could, could help you in your game based on our experience as dungeon masters? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I've got, this is, this is, I, I want to like, highlight myself, right? There was, I was, uh, in a, I was running a game. I was the dungeon master, right? And, um, my players had captured a guard and were really getting into the, um, the torture aspect of, you know, getting him to talk. They were under a, mm. under a time limit and they were, they were really excited, having a good time, you know, uh, the 24 uh, they, situation. They, they were real. They were Jack Bowering it up. And, and at one point they described something that I would describe as light sexual assault. And I said, boy, you can do that, but that's pretty fucked up. Um, and after the session, they were like, yeah, wow, I'm really sorry. That actually was pretty fucked up. I did not stop them. Right. I did not say we're not going to do that. But I expressed my discomfort and I said, that's not great. Um, and. If I were doing it again, I would say, hey, maybe not. Maybe that's not this kind of game. But I was still, like, learning at the time. Right. And, um, you know, that was a less elegant way to solve this problem. But if I had had something like this, right, if I'd had my own X card, for example, I could have been like, maybe not. Maybe do something else. Um, right. Or if you just presented your players with this checklist or something similar, the very act of seeing, for example, torture or sexual assault... Being like, you know what? That that's probably not something we're gonna do, yeah. right? So that was a learning. Even experience. if they had checked greed, right? Yeah, uh, that, that was a yeah. learning experience for me, uh, and it ended up being fine. These people were my friends, but uh, in retrospect, it would have been great if I'd had something like this. Yeah, uh, I think I'm gonna keep my example pretty vague because I don't know the people involved in it, and uh, you know, so I don't want to like uh, give information that would uh, lead to their identities. But I was at a convention LARP horror game and uh at this point in the campaign uh or in the in the session uh of of the LARP my my character had gone completely insane right he could only talk in rhymes which would take me a while to con uh compose he was a English professor who had read some forbidden poetry so as you can tell it's kind of maybe a light-hearted horror game <laughs> if if that's how uh insanity is is handled uh, you know call of cthulhu type stuff and uh at one end of the building um there uh there was a a uh, a pair of a player and a game master and several other people around and i could clearly see uh, that uh, one of the players was uncomfortable. And this was in the, like, fourth hour of a four-hour LARP. And, uh, you know, I had not thought about consent or what was going on. 
And I just continued on my way being insane and left one of my fellow players to be made uh, uncomfortable. I still feel pretty bad about that. And I, I feel like uh, if I had thought about this more, you know, I might have done something differently. I later found out that, uh, you know, the the game master was abusing his game powers to describe uh, like, you know, some evil happening to, I don't know exactly what, to that player that made this person feel very uncomfortable, so uncomfortable that they complained uh, to the con or organizers. Uh, thankfully, this game master was asked never to come back. But, um, yeah, I, I feel bad. Uh, I saw something that was uh, someone's consent being violated, but, right, uh, I hadn't, uh, I didn't, didn't do anything about that. And now, if I see something like that, right, I will, um, you know, make sure that uh, people feel safe in games that I am playing in. And I think this brings up, I think this brings us to like one of the big takeaways of this and just sort of the, the consent discussion in general. And that's that nobody's perfect, right? And we're all still learning how to do this. I think what I would just encourage you all, if you're not already open to this, is just to be comfortable admitting fault uh, be willing to learn, be open to gentle criticism, and just commit to, to doing better, commit to growing. And I think this is a, a very normal and natural human thing to do, and we're all going to make mistakes, but I, I think that avoiding the topic and not addressing the question of consent in gaming is a mistake. And I, I think that if you allow yourself the space to make mistakes and to recover from them, and to, you know, build on that, then there's no reason why you shouldn't, you know, embrace this type of uh, premeditated, you know, discussion about consent, and why it can't be a wonderful and good thing for your game. Yeah, I, I earlier said that the easiest, uh, simplest way would be to give your players or, or people at your table the consent set checklist. The easiest and most straightforward thing you can do is just have a, a, a brief discussion about this. By bringing it up as a topic, you've put it on everyone at your table's minds that, you know, you want to make sure that you don't cause real harm to your friends. Exactly. Well, Matt, any final thoughts before we sign off? Um, I, we're going to link this in the show notes and uh, as well as some of the resources. Um, if you have thoughts about this, if you have additional questions, uh, we can talk about this in greater detail. Uh, and we'll bring it up again because it's important. But I, I think this is a terrific resource. I think every DM should read this. And yeah, thanks to Monty Cook for putting it out. My my only final thought is I hope we good, did a good enough job uh, about talking this talking about this in a good and uh, uh, understanding way. Uh, and uh, Lord knows we are nowhere near um, an authoritative or final word on this topic. Uh, yeah, Matt, we just Matt thought we should. Talk about it, because we want to. Matt, Matt and I are keenly aware that we are uh, cis, male, white guys, and uh, also uh, old and stuck in our ways and deeply imperfect. But we care about this, and we wanted to talk about it, and we thought it was important. So if we have been insensitive, we will be grown-ups and apologize, because that's what grown-ups do. <laughs> so yeah, let us know. We're going to say, sorry if we offended you. <laughs> yeah, we'll say sorry. Oh, were you offended? Were you offended? Uh, and then... This is this is actually what's uh, really deeply ironic is, is uh, the people who are against talking about this are just fucking offended. They're so... They're offended... That someone else might consider others' feelings in their little They're systems. So upset that they might have to consider another person's feelings. It, it it viscerally upsets them. And so they project that upsetness upon everyone around them. Thank you. This has been Rob Guthrie's five seconds of psychological uh examination. Um Yep. All right, Matt. Uh thank you everybody for uh, listening, if you have questions or comments or thoughts, write us at dmofnone at gmail.com, add us on Twitter at dmofnone. This has been Dungeon Master of None. Or you can give us a call at the Dungeon Master hotline, 774-203-4629. That's right. As I was saying, this has been Sorry. Dungeon Master of None. I'm Dungeon Master Rob. I'm Dungeon Master Matt, and today we're talking about Monty Cook's consent <laughs> in gaming. That's Sorry, right, I restarted that. All right, uh, keep rolling them dice. Yeah, I heard a funny thing. Somebody said to me, 
you know that I could be 